So the first um, module that we're going to look at is going to be all on the organic chemistry again. Um, you need to know all your AS organic, so please don't forget that, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that um, on the way over here. But we're going to look at a very, very uh, special type of organic molecule, and they are called amines. Now you've met amines before um, in benzene, and it's benzene we look at. Uh, we met benzene when you did uh, alkanes, and you were looking at reforming. And when you reformed benzene, you may remember with one of your products. So we're going to look at the structure of benzene. But benzene has the empirical formula of CH. And its molecular formula is C6H6. And its structure puzzled chemists for a long time. So it's trying to work out how do I combine six hydrogens with six carbons to make sure the carbon's got four bonds and hydrogen only has one bond. And this is the structure that they came up with. A guy called Keckley came up with this structure. So Keckley turned around and he said he thinks it looks like this. It's carbon as a six membered ring, like so. Each carbon has a hydrogen coming off, and I have alternating double and single bonds. And that's the simplest alien called. So he publishes to the scientific world, and they're like, yay, we've got a structure of benzene. Is it actually the right structure? So let's have a think about this. From all the organic molecules that you've learned about AS, what is it most like? If I might check that. Cyclic, yeah, I've got a cyclic alkane. What about a cyclic alkene? Yeah, so it should behave like an alkene. What's the test for an alkene? Bromine. Bromine water, and it would decolorize. So it should decolorize bromine. So the first thing chemists is they put a load of bromine water into benzene, and it should decolorize. It didn't work. So one of the problems, so this was his proposed structure, But one of the problems is benzene does not react with Br2 aqueous, which it should if it's got double bonds. So that's one of the problems that they came out with. The other problem was its shape. What do we know about the length between of single and double bonds? Double yeah, double and shorter because it's stronger. So if I actually drew this out as it should, it should kind of look like this. So um, the structure. Look like, and if we draw out, I have a carbon with a very, very short double bond, and then a long single bond, and then a short double bond, and then a long single bond, short double bond, long single bond, little hydrogens coming off. So it should look like that with different. Carbon, carbon bond lengths. Or the double and single bond. So it should look like that. We 
can get a picture of it using a technique called X-ray detection. The carbon carbon bond lengths are all the same. So in um, in fact, all the carbon carbon bond lengths are the same. And they're actually um, between a carbon carbon bond length and a carbon carbon double bond length. So they're actually neither one or the other, they're an average of the two. And it's a lovely hexagon. That was another problem with Keckley's structure that they came up with. They said, oh, it should look like that, but actually it looks like this. There's something wrong. So there's something wrong with his proposed structure. But the final nail in the coffin came in terms of his structure when they looked at some energy calculations. So this will take a little bit of space. You'll need about half a page to do this. So this is problemo number three. So number three, and these are energy calculations. Right, so we need quite a lot of space. I'm gonna start about the middle of the way down. Let's say I take cyclohexene. Typical cycloalkene. So on this axis, I will have NPP. And I take a typical, I just take cyclohexene. This has got one double bond. I react it with a hydrogen molecule using a nickel catalyst. What will I make? Cyclohexene with hydrogen. Cyclohexene, yeah, cool. Now, cyclohexene, and it's an exothermic reaction, so my arrow goes down. So, delta H is actually minus 120 kilojoules per mole. And I make cyclohexene. So, I start with cyclohexene, react it with a hydrogen. I make so I do that in the lab, do the experiment, all fine and dandy. Then, what would happen is my um, theoretical chemist buddies, they would go away and they'd do a calculation and they would predict in theory what I should get if I reacted benzene with hydrogen. So, in red is the predicted value. I help with it red, so in green would be the so if I take Keckley benzene, with its alternating double and single bonds, like so, and I'm going to do the same reaction, but this is just in theory. If one double bond reacting with hydrogen gives me 120, if I've got three double bonds, what should I get in theory? Yeah, so, so this is in theory, delta H should equal minus 360 kilojoules per mole. And is everybody happy with that? So this is just one double bond. 
I've got three double bonds, so I'm going to add three hydrogens to it, so I should times it by three. But remember, that's in theory. So, then the chemists who in the lab come along. And they actually do the experiment. They take benzene, so I'm going to call this real benzene, and this needs to be in between those two lines. So this is the experimental value. So I take real benzene. I'm going to draw it as a little hexagon with a circle in the middle, because that's how we do have to represent it. And I react it with three hydrogen molecules. I do the actual experiment, and I find delta H to actually be equal minus 208 kilojoules per mole. So all those three bits of evidence to just Keckley got it a little bit wrong. Yes, they have, and we'll talk about that next time. Okay. So we do know what the structure is, but at the moment all we know is that this isn't the correct structure that we've actually got. Now on your summary sheet, oh, well, let's just talk about this. This is the most stable molecule out of all of these. How do we know, just based on how do we know as chemists that that's pretty stable? What chemistry do alkanes do? They burn and free radical substitution, and that's it. They're really, really dull. Chemically, they're dull, they're very stable, they don't want to react. The higher they are up here, the more energy they've got, they're more likely to react. They all want to become stable. So we would say that benzene, real benzene, is actually more stable than we predicted. We predict its energy to be up here, but actually it's more stable. The way we put that on your summary sheet, it says energetics calculations and experiments indicate benzene is more stable than expected. Can you just add to that? Because this is what they actually want in the exam. The hydrogenation of benzene is less exothermic than expected. And that's what they want in the exam. Because that's the actual experiment they're to relate to. 